So in today's video, we're gonna be going over how I'm earning over $400 in dividends every single month. This is one way to earn passive income on your stock market portfolio. So before we jump through the rest of the video, don't forget to destroy the like button. And if you guys want some free stocks, links are gonna be in the description for Robinhood, Webull. If you guys haven't signed up yet, that is free for you. Also, you guys can join my Patreon community if you guys need some extra help on how to start investing in the stock market. So over the last few weeks, the stock market has been completely on fire. And just like many of you guys, I've been investing in the stock market just like you. And I've just recently passed a big milestone of earning over $400 a month in passive income through dividend investing. And let me show you exactly how I'm doing that with my Robinhood portfolio, with my M1 Finance portfolio all together here. So if we take a look here, this is my entire portfolio. Um, really popular portfolios that I show on this channel a lot is my Robinhood and my M1 Finance Roth IRA. So this is all included here. Everything added up all together is $157,438. This is a dividend tracker that I've been using over the last year and I love it. it tells me everything I need to know about my portfolio. Links are gonna be in the description if you guys want to check this out. So if we take a look here at the main attraction, uh, my annual income is gonna be roughly $5,189. So this is the number that is most important for me. You know, this uh, balance here is gonna go up and down on a daily basis, but what I want to increase over time is this $5,000, this 5,000 annual income here. So if we did some quick math, 5,189 divided by uh, 12 months, we're gonna see that I'm making roughly $432 in dividends every single month on average. So now we're just gonna jump around this portfolio and I'm gonna just give you my tips after doing this for about three years now. And it took me three years to go from zero dividends to $400 worth of dividends every single month. Think about some of the, you might be able to pay some bills making $400 a month in dividends. So I'm gonna continue to do this dividend investing strategy and try to get this, the ultimate goal is to get it all the way up to $5,000 in dividends. That is roughly how much money uh, in my expenses every single month. You know, if we include taxes and stuff, yeah, I probably need to get it a little bit more, but so just to make things a little bit easier, we're just gonna save $5,000 in dividends every single month. So this is what the uh, income portfolio is gonna be looking like. On the right here, this is what the actual payments are gonna be looking like on a month to month basis. In January, I'm gonna see somewhere between $169, February 342, in March, this is where I'm gonna be getting paid the most, $767. So I'm gonna tell you exactly what companies that I own that's paying me the most amount of dividends. I'm gonna tell you the good and the bad of everything that I'm doing here. So scrolling down, we can see the next 30 days, these are my dividend payments. You know, I like to talk about a lot of these companies I went over in my last video um, about monthly dividend stocks. A monthly dividend stock here that is paying me $63.82 every single month. So this one is like a recurring payment. AG and C is also a recurring payment, $24 a month. Um, MO is Ultra Group, the cigarette company is paying me $24.80. Um, if we look here, February 1st, this is a big payment from these three companies, JP Morgan, AT&T, Verizon, almost $200 on February 2nd. So I love making my money work for me and through dividend investing, this is one way that I'm able to do it. Very similar to how I uh, get my money to work for me from uh, my real estate investments in rental properties. In the future, I'm planning to live off my dividends and live off my rental income, but right now I'm putting the work to get this to a sustainable level. So if we look down even further, this is the year ahead. So if you wanna take down all of these companies, these are the companies uh, that I own in my portfolio. This is the month and all the way over here on the right column, these are the totals that uh, these companies are paying me. So one thing that you're gonna see is a lot of the companies that I own, these are name brand companies. I'm not investing in some crazy penny stock that you never heard of. I'm not day trading back and forth, trying to just make a quick buck here. I'm doing a slow, and steady approach to investing. And in general, that is what dividend investing is. It's a very slow and steady approach to investing in the stock market. Uh, there's different ways of making money in the stock market and just investing in dividends is just what I gravitated to. Um, I'm also experimenting with um, growth stocks as well. There's a handful of growth stocks in my portfolio. And the last thing that I'm experimenting with that I think I'm getting the, the hang of is 
investing with uh, the wheel strategy, which is an options trading strategy. I'll be going over that in another video in the future. So going down the list, you guys can see this is the, the monthly breakdown from every single company. So like I said, if you wanna take this down and you're seeing something that you like, like Coca-Cola is a great dividend company, Lowe's, McDonald's, 3M, um, I'm just gonna go down here and you guys can just see everything for yourself. Like I said, Realty Income is a monthly paying dividend stock. Every single month I'm getting paid roughly $63 from all of my accounts and that's $765 uh, at the end of the year. So these numbers are starting to really add up and the biggest uh, dividend payer in my portfolio right now is ExxonMobil. I still believe that ExxonMobil is very undervalued, especially when the price of crude oil now is roughly sitting at $50 uh, per barrel. If the market for crude oil can sustain that level, $50 a barrel, then definitely ExxonMobil is very undervalued in my opinion. So from ExxonMobil, I'm seeing roughly $1,700 in dividends, and that is my biggest dividend payer. So one thing that I don't like about my portfolio is that I have a lot of stocks. I got, I own 41 holdings in this portfolio, and you know, for a count my size, uh, 150,000, I feel like 41 companies is a lot. Yes, there are some ETFs in there, so I, you probably can subtract maybe five. So maybe I have 36 individual stocks in there. And that is, re that is a lot of information for me to handle. I have to keep track of these companies. I have to stay on top of them. And I think that is one downside to owning so many companies. So if you're just beginning, I feel like if you own just a maybe a handful of stocks, up to 10 stocks maybe, um, especially if your portfolio is still under $100,000, I think that would be a great start for, you know, trying to earn some passive income with your dividends. So one thing that I'm always watching out for as well when it comes to my portfolio is the dividend growth. And this is the one thing that I've been lacking and this is something that I need to improve on if I want to have a more successful portfolio in the future. So just hear me out here if you guys might, you guys might be having the same problems as well. So this is um, what my dividend growth is looking like. The last year is 4.4, which is considered slow by this dividend tracker, Simply Safe Dividends. Um, in the last five years is 3.7. In the last 10 years is 4.1. So one thing that I'm looking to improve here is to invest more into the companies that are growing their dividends. Um, companies that grow their dividends, some examples are Dividend Kings and Dividend Aristocrats. So in these two categories, Dividend Kings, I think they consecutively have increased their dividends over the last 50 years. And uh, Dividend Aristocrats is they've continually increased their dividends every single year for the last 25 years. So I think if you guys are just starting out into um, dividend investing, go look up those two terms, go look up those lists of companies, they, you're gonna know a lot of them. So my plan and my adjustment for this year will be to get these numbers um, a bit higher. I want this to be at least a medium, not a slow. So maybe in the 5% range or the 6% range. So that is one thing that I'm looking to improve on this portfolio. So if you guys are in the same boat as me when it comes to your portfolio, definitely look to improve those numbers for growth potential because now going into the growth potential here, my current annual income is 5,000. And if we take a look at the projected and just push these numbers through the next five years, it'll look like this, 6,000 in the next 10 years, 7,000 in the next 15 years, 9,000 in the next 20 years, 10,000. So this is the compound effect of the um, growth potential of this portfolio. So what I do with my dividends is basically I reinvest them. I'm not planning to use these dividends anytime soon. Um, what I'm planning to do is continue to do this for the next few years and I know for a fact my dividends will explode. Uh, that is the compound effect, that is the snowball effect of dividend investing. So um, yes, this is what it'll look like if I'm not investing any money. So every single month I'm looking to invest about $4,000 if I can. That is how much I'm looking to put into the stock market every single month. And I've been able to do that now for at least the last three to four months, which is, is tough on the wallet. I'm making such a big sacrifice, but I know it's worth, it's gonna be worth it at the, end of, uh, at the end of my lifetime. So lastly, let's take a look at some of the companies that are undervalued in my portfolio. This is a analytical tool as well. Um, they go over a lot of the metrics in my portfolio. So that's why um, I always recommend using this um, for beginners. It's completely free for the first two weeks. So um, try it out, you guys might like it. So some companies that are potentially undervalued in my portfolio, ExxonMobil, 
Um, the reason why I'm not investing any more into ExxonMobil right now is because I currently have over $20,000 in ExxonMobil. Um, I'm looking for them to hopefully rebound a bit and uh, maybe if uh, they do a little bit better over time, I might invest more, but definitely um, at the current state right now, I'm not looking to invest that much more into ExxonMobil. But some other companies that I will be looking to invest in is uh, Walgreens. So there's a lot of bullish news coming out of Walgreens. Um, there, there's gonna be a lot of vaccine and like COVID testing going on there. So that's gonna bring in a lot of new customers over there, guaranteed, just because everybody wants to get that, um, get vaccinated for COVID. So I think definitely that will bring a lot of new customers into Walgreens. And uh, moving down here, we can see AT&T is still maybe undervalued here. I'm always investing in AT&T as long as it's under $30. And lastly, another dividend company that I'm always looking to invest in is Pfizer. Now that the vaccine is out, there's a lot of bullish news for that. Imagine if everybody in America needs to get a vaccine. Imagine how much money Pfizer would make from that. So that's a quick look at some of the undervalued companies in my portfolio. So now let's take a look at some reasonably valued stocks and some overvalued stocks. So, you know, just right off the top, we see McDonald's could be reasonably valued, JP Morgan, Starbucks is overvalued, UPS is overvalued, Lowe's overvalued, Costco overvalued. So my plan with these companies, you know, they're gonna be a great long-term investment. So I'm looking to just, so I'm just look, so I'm looking to just dollar cost average into them. I'm putting in a few hundred dollars into each one every single month. And over time, I think I'll be able to beat the market that way. So here's a quick look at all my portfolios because, you know, I'm invested everywhere. I have a HSA account, a health savings account, 7,000, Roth IRA account, 21,000. This one's getting pretty fat. I, I need to do another investment here and max it out for the year. M1 Finance Portfolio is sitting at 40,000. Robinhood sitting at 88,000. I still have the Robinhood Challenge to go to get to 100,000 in this portfolio. It's gonna take me a few more months, I believe. Uh, you know, to make $12,000 in a few months, that's a lot. And a SEP IRA, this is an account that um, I need to max out at the end of the year as well. So that is my total investments in all of my portfolios. I'm, in, I'm invested a little bit everywhere. So here's a, just a quick snapshot of all of them, just for some more proof. I'm not lying to you guys. I do have a bit of money everywhere. So those are my tips for having $400 in earned dividends every single month. Um, if you guys enjoyed this video, don't forget to hit the like, subscribe, hit that notification for more videos just like this. Go check out these videos here if you guys want more content from me. And don't forget that you guys can join my membership if you guys want to connect with me in any way to help with your investments because I've been getting so many DMs and I'm just so busy now with everything that I can't really talk to everybody like that, like I used to. So go follow me on Instagram, go follow me on my second channel and I'll see you guys there. Bye.